Welcome to the Wowza project. Wowza stands for What's on the Web Say for All Family Members. Wowza seeks to empower family members with digital literacy skills that focus on how individuals interpret, apply, and synthesize information and content that is sourced online. This way, they can form balanced and informed opinions. Wowza consists of a package of different learning materials, all developed to support family learning, this audio book is one of them. Digital literacy is a set of skills required to be able to use computers and the internet, it means having the skills you need to live, learn, and work in a society where communication and access to information is increasingly through digital technologies such as internet platforms, social media, and mobile devices. Digital competence is the responsible, confident, and critical use of information and communication technology for work, leisure, learning and communication in the digital world. Media literacy is equally important nowadays as it means having the ability or skills to critically analyze the media for accuracy, credibility, or evidence of bias. The media incorporates any content created and consumed, including on the internet and on social media. This ebook consists of nine chapters, which will equip you with the needed knowledge to navigate the digital world of today. Digital literacy has become a necessity in the 21st century, one that most of us are still trying to grasp. The evolution of technology and the internet has made digital literacy an integral skill for many jobs and educative resources. In today's world, technology is all around us. It has become a fundamental component within our hyperconnected society. In a world full of screens, everything is on demand as endless information is constantly at our fingertips. Digital literacy is a key component in allowing people to make informed choices and decisions in today's ubiquitous digital and social media environments. With this, digital literacy can further your ability to become an informed digital citizen and support you with the know-how to use technology to interact with the world around you. This will help to support you to know the potentials and pitfalls of technology and ultimately, help you to navigate this new world full of possibilities. Chapter 1, The Language of Digital and Media Literacy Key Terms Explained Being familiar with the terms of the digital media world is key to better understanding the language and communication style of the online world. This audiobook will introduce you to some of the key terms most commonly used in the digital world. Information Information are facts about a situation, person, event and so on. Information depends on the situation and can identify more details about a certain subject. Research Research is a detailed study of a subject, especially in order to discover new information or reach a new understanding. Error Error is something done or written by accident that is not correct, not accurate or does not give the right result. Audio Audio is a sound recording or related to hearing a sound, just like this audio book. Video Video is an electronic recording of moving pictures and sound, as a digital file, for example a movie, a TV program, or YouTube video. Active participation in the digital world. Active participation relates to the competences that citizens need to be fully aware of how they interact within the digital environments they inhabit in order to make responsible decisions, whilst participating actively and positively in the democratic cultures in which they live. Programs. Programs stand for a broadcast on television or radio. Social media. Social media is a group of platforms that has content generated by its users. This tends to contain text, photos, videos, or even animations. These platforms facilitate communication between groups of people from all over the world. Social media is an extremely broad term as it is used for many purposes. As a news source, a social tool, a self-presentation tool, a support platform or even for selling products. Nowadays, more companies are using social media platforms for promoting their products to its users and reaching interested all over the world. Moreover, politicians and even religious groups are presenting themselves and attracting voters or religious people on their side through these platforms. The most popular social media platforms of today are Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube and each year new platforms are developed. Each one of these platforms works in the same way, using the content created by users, however, to address diverse types of people using different media. To understand social media better, you should know the key terms frequently used by its users.
Sharing. Sharing refers to content that was already published by somebody else. Either a person or company, and which you either send forward via private message or you share it on your main page so the others could see it also. For example, on Twitter, where users make posts called tweets, this is called retweeting. Posting. Posting refers to the act of publishing any content either a text, photo, or video on social media platforms. The content is called a post. Liking. As a user, you can express whether you like what you are reading or seeing on social media. When you come across content that you like, you can choose to give it a thumbs up or a heart. This means that you find the content that you are seeing interesting, and the author will be notified. Tweeting. Tweeting is a term used only for the platform called Twitter and means writing a text and publishing it. Keeping in mind that the platform allows just short texts of 140 characters, so it needs to be short and sweet. Reactions. Reactions refer similarly to the action of liking content, but recently it became associated more with the platform Facebook. Reactions allow you to, you guessed it, react to content with different icons such as the care reaction or the heart reaction. With these new icons with different meaning than a simple like in a shape of a heart, means that you love the content, a smiley figure hugging a heart means that you show care for the content. A laughing face means you find the content funny. A crying face means you find the content sad, and the angry red face means that the content makes you angry or you disagree with it. Following. This term expresses interest in receiving constant updates from a certain person, organization, or a company. When you follow someone on social media, you will gain access to updates when a person or organization is posting something new. This feature is not present on all platforms, but it can be found on most of social media platforms. This feature appears on YouTube also, but under a different name, subscribe. Followers. Followers are the people that are following a social media page or account. Companies tend to aim for a large following base, as it means they can market to their followers online gaining future buyers. Friends. The term friends appears on the Facebook platform where you can request to be friends with any given person. It is recommended to only request someone to be your friend if you know them, but this is not a requirement. In reality, it doesn't matter if you know him, her in real life, you can still be friends on social media platforms. This gives you access to what are they posting, or you can communicate via these platforms with them. Groups. Groups are mostly present on Facebook and are similar to any other offline club. People with the same interests gather in online spaces to talk about a common subject and share different ideas and information. Hashtag. Hashtag is a word or unspaced phrase prefixed with the hash symbol became extremely popular on the Twitter platform, but has since cropped up on many other social media platforms. The hashtag works to group similar content under a certain topic. So, if you publish a photo that contains a mountain and hiking, and you add the hashtag hash mountain in the description of the photo. This categorizes the post and it will appear on an extra page, which is named after the hashtag you are using, together with all the other photos that were given the same hashtag from everybody around the world. Companies, organizations but even individuals are using hashtags for visibility, and it helps in spreading their content with more people around the world. Tagging. Tagging means identifying a person or a company when you are publishing online content such as a photo or video where the person appears. By doing so, the person identified will be tagged or identified and will have the possibility of sharing your post on their social media page. Notifications. Notifications are sounds or visual symbols that appear on the social media platform when something new happens. For example, if you have received a message or a friend posted something new. In simple terms, it is an online announcement. Online scams. Meaning and types. What are online scams? In today's world, online scams are frequent. There are different methods of fraud on the internet created by cybercriminals. The main purpose of these types of scams can range from credit card theft, capturing user login and password credentials and even identity theft. These kinds of frauds can catch you out via email, SMS, phone calls, online links, and downloadable content. The most common online scam is phishing. 
Phishing is a method of online scamming where cybercriminals send emails that are look like they are sent from a valid source, either by your bank, your social media account, an online shop that you used recently or a service you are subscribed to like Netflix or Amazon. These cybercriminals trick you into thinking that the communication is from the company you trust with the intent of stealing your personal data or gaining access to your bank account. Another popular type of phishing is the messages from unknown people who offer you rewards or lavish gifts. A popular scenario where this happens is the story of the Nigerian prince. Over recent years, many people received messages from a so-called Nigerian prince who asks you for a small fee in reward for a large money inheritance. This scam tricked many people because they were tricked into disclosing their bank account details via a link that is given by them inside the emails. The easiest way of identifying these kinds of scams is paying attention to the email address from which the email was sent. Bear in mind that official institutions are not using free email providers such as Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail or similar. Grammar mistakes and unnaturally sounding sentences. Odd URL, link, supposedly sending you to the company you interact with. Low resolution logo or images. There are a few things to keep in mind before opening any link sent to you via email. Banks and official institutions will never ask you for personal information via email or phone. If you receive an email from somebody that you don't know that is asking for personal information or money you should not open the link. Now, let's define some common terms. Spam. Spam is the electronic equivalent of junk mail that you receive by post. Besides being invasive, it can contain phishing links that if clicked on can infect your device with a virus or steal your personal information. Trolling. Trolling is the act of a person that posts content with the intention of creating a negative discussion on a given subject. Many online trolls do so to gain popularity by upsetting the readers. Usually the content is provocative, negative, or out of the context. This action is usually done for the troll's amusement or for disrupting the online activity of a person or public figure. Internet etiquette or netiquette. Netiquette is short for internet etiquette. Just like etiquette is a code of polite behavior in society, netiquette is a code of good behavior online. This includes several aspects of the internet, such as email, social media, online chat, web forums, website comments, multiplayer gaming, and other types of online communication. There is no official list of netiquette rules, but we can mention some of the most common ones. Use respectful language, do not swear, or use offensive language. Respect the other users as you would respect them in real life. Respect their privacy and don't share any information or photo, video outside of the private message they might have shared with you. Avoid posting offensive content. Avoid answering with negative comment to a negative post. Say thank you if somebody helped you online or answered your question. Answer other people's questions if you know the answer. Stick to the topic when answering a certain message, photo or video. Don't troll people. Don't send vast amounts of unwanted messages, emails, that's called spamming. Social media promotes communication. It is here that many common terms have over time become abbreviated. The most commonly used abbreviations in online communication are DM, DM stands for direct message, used mostly on Instagram. PM. PM means private message, used mostly on Facebook. FB. FB stands for Facebook. IG. IG stands for Instagram. BRB. BRB means be right back. By the way. By the way stands for by the way. FOMO. FOMO means fear of missing out. FYI. FYI means for your information. URL. URL means global web address of a website or page. LOL. LOL means laugh out loud. OMG. OMG means oh, my god. IDK. IDK means I don't know. TY. TY stands for thank you. YOLO. YOLO means you only live once. KK. KK means OK. BC. BC is short for because. PLS. PLS is short for please.
Chapter 2. Disinformation. Fake news. And fact-checking. What does fake news mean? Fake news is false or misleading information that is presented as news. Normally, it is not based on any real facts and the message and misleads people who come across it. Fake news spreads very easily on social media platforms. The purpose of this information is mainly to mislead the public opinion in a certain direction and in this way to create a false opinion about a certain person, personality, or business. Fake news or disinformation presents itself in different ways online. Some types of fake news are Clickbait Clickbait is a sensationalized headline or piece of text on the internet designed to entice people to follow a link to an article on another web page. Propaganda Propaganda is a way of communication that is presenting a piece of information in a subjective way, sometimes even showing only parts of the information with the scope of influencing the audience towards a certain behavior or political agenda. Satire or parody Satire or parody is a way of communication that has no intention to cause harm, but has potential to fool, usually for comedic effect. Parroting Parroting is the act of repeating heard information without educating oneself on the subject or forming an intelligent argument of one's own. The difference between misinformation, disinformation and malinformation stays in the intention with which the information is shared. Misinformation is false information disseminated without harmful intent, for example a news or photo that was shared further by your relatives without being checked. Disinformation is created and shared by people with harmful intent. As the name suggests, its scope is to create false information about a subject or person. Malinformation is the sharing of genuine information with the intent to cause harm. For example, when confidential information about a public person is shared online with the scope of destroying the image of the person. To check if a certain piece of information is fake or not, you need to check multiple sources and see if the information also appears on valid news portals or even in the international press. Multiple sources of information is the base of journalism, and a valid news article should have at least four different sources of information. An important aspect is also whether the authors are named and if there are any supporting sources. The date of the publication is important to assess whether the story is relevant and up to date. The International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, IFLA, created a list of main points to consider when you are trying to assess if a piece of news is fake or not. Consider the source, to understand its mission and purpose. Read beyond the headline, to understand the whole story. Check the authors, to see if they are real and credible. Assess the supporting sources, to ensure they support the claims. Check the date of publication, to see if the story is relevant and up to date. Ask if it is a joke, to determine if it is satire. Review your own biases, to see if they are affecting your judgment. Ask experts, to get confirmation from independent people with knowledge. Media and digital literacy are the key to avoiding being manipulated by misleading and fake information online. Failing to recognize the manipulative nature of the information taken from the internet can lead to deformed opinions and create confusion. Very often, unchecked and unconfirmed rumors are spread on the internet in order to create confusion, cause unrest, and mislead the public on specific issues. Those rumors are very often sugarcoated with some truth but surrounded by untrue and misleading information. Those rumors often appear with eye catching headlines, sensationalized information supported by misleading claims. Being aware of such practices is especially important nowadays with the popularity of social media platforms. Besides the efforts of the platforms themselves to curate and flag fake news, the amount of rumors and fake information is so big that the platforms are having a challenging time regulating this practice. In such an environment, these platforms, and digital media, in general, are becoming a source of information disorder. Knowing about the fake news and misinformation phenomena online brings us to what we can do about it. It is important to remember your personal responsibility as a user of digital technologies and social media platforms. Try to be mindful when consuming news and information and always check the source, author, the purpose of the article, and the author's point of view. By knowing who and where the information is coming from, you can form better and well-informed opinions on any topic.
Chapter 3. Consumerism and what advertising is trying to sell us. Consumerism is usually defined as a social movement that protects consumers and promotes the consumption of goods on the market. Digital consumerism, as an extension of the standard concept of consumerism, is a concept which involves purchasing and selling goods and services in the digital world, including on social media sites. With the appearance of virtual marketplaces on the world stage, the behavior and interactions in the virtual world are dramatically changing and the rapid change creates a vulnerability due to the use of misinformation, misleading and deceptive information available in the online markets. The main way that digital marketplaces are working is through digital advertising. This is any form of advertising that is shown online, regardless of how it appears on your browser, social media applications, or any other advertisement on the internet. Nowadays, this modern form of advertising appears in multiple forms that can include video streaming sites like YouTube, pay-per-click, PPC, ads you see at the top of search results, social media posts, sponsored content and more. Unfortunately, some online advertising can be of a deceptive nature. The use of eye-catching graphics and other psychological tricks can direct you to choose a preferable option that is most profitable for online retailers. Some of these methods are Misdirection towards the right choice. By using visuals and colorful buttons, retailers can direct you towards the more expensive option that they would like you to choose. The cheaper version might hide behind a smaller, less visible location on the website. The same applies to the options of subscribing to a service, but the unsubscribe button might be small, hidden, and added extra steps to finish the action. It's really important to pay attention and carefully read the whole text while being aware of visual manipulation. Adding unwanted additional items in the shopping cart. When buying online, some retailers may add additional items in the shopping cart that you might not be aware of. It might be written with small letters or check boxes under the item. With this, the customer ends up with additional costs or unwanted items in their online shopping cart. For example, if you were shopping online and a TV, the online website could add an extended warranty or additional HDMI cables to your shopping cart. Hidden costs and not showing the price until the end. In moments when you spend a good amount of time checking products and you find the perfect product for the perfect price, at the end of the process when you have to pay, you realize there are additional costs or different prices may appear. Many retailers hide the full price until the end of the process when you're more likely to buy the product instead of spending more time searching for another online shop. Often, the increased price includes some hidden cost or extra subscription that was explained only with small, grey text underneath the product description. Remember to look at the fine print, watch for checkboxes or cancel your subscription before you get charged. Rushing you to impulsively buy fast. Some of the tactics employed for this are statements that the product might be limited in stock or showing that other people are buying it with notifications of names purchasing the product in your area. These notifications are enabled by knowing your location via location services. These tactics are employed to make sure you don't think too much before buying the products with the fear of missing out. Usually, this is an advertisement tactic and there is no need for impulsive buying. Extremely easy to sign up and very hard to cancel. Many times, the options for subscribing to an online service can be as easy as completing a simple and short questionnaire with your data. But, if you decide that the product or service is not fitting your needs and desires, cancelling can be a headache. Sometimes, it can be difficult to find the cancel option on the website. It could involve telephoning a call center, or you may find a list of complicated rules to discourage the customer from cancelling the payments towards the company. It's advisable to check the cancelling options before making a subscription to a service or product and being aware of the process involved. Asking you to create an account before you able to browse the site. By asking you to create an account before you are able to see the products, the retailer already gains valuable data about you. This is generally used to target you with additional advertisements and marketing offers. When you have already created an account, psychologically it's easier to buy something after already invested time in creating the account. To sum up, awareness and protecting yourself from these practices may involve reading the small print, looking for checkboxes, and being aware of the deceptive visuals common on many online retailer websites. Don't let yourself be pressured by these tactics and avoid impulsive buying. 
If you don't understand the text, don't click because most likely you're agreeing on conditions that you might not understand and might be hard to reverse once agreed to. In comparison to classic advertising, the digital marketeer has the tools and capabilities to monitor and tailor personalized ads just for you. Everything you do with your electronic devices is monitored, tracked, reported, and stored. And all that information is saved indefinitely, ready to be rolled out at a moment's notice to help a company make a sale. Online advertisers use various techniques like following your activity history through the sites, using location technology, and cookies, which are bits of programming that operate in the background of a website, app, or device. That's information the web browser deposited on your computer with a cookie. When you go back to the site, the computer reads the cookie and distills the information from your previous visits. Many people are not completely aware of how this technology puts their privacy at risk. With the possibility of obtaining personal and confidential data. These advertising methods are given the opportunity to develop specific products to satisfy consumers' needs according to their race, gender, age or location. However, the data could also be used to manipulate an uninformed customer into buying a specific product that might not benefit them. One way to limit the extent of data being shared with online marketers is to switch off location services and use ad blocker apps, applications that block ads being pushed towards you. Another way is to carefully read the conditions when accepting cookies from websites and refuse to accept when you don't agree with the conditions. In the same way, advertisement on social media tends to be tailored personally based on the activity the user shows on the service. Different users can receive different ads because they show different behavior on social media. Many of those ads are driven towards the user's emotional response to information presented online. By paying attention to online advertisements that trigger emotional responses, we can explore what distinguishes these advertisements from the usual flow of ads to the degree that people remember them and want to share their experiences. It's wise to be aware that many ads might come disguised as normal content on social media, typically looking like normal posts on Facebook or as stories on Instagram. These posts are sponsored and guide the user toward purchasing a product or a service. Generally, all these sophisticated and new methods of advertising in the digital world can be very challenging and can put people in vulnerable positions especially young children and older people. New and ever-changing strategies of online advertising are trying to appeal to their users by tracking their behavior. This subliminally influences you to create new desires, efficiently creating new markets for their goods and services. By being aware of the strategies and limiting the data we share online, we can minimize the consequences and create a safer online environment for all users of social media. Chapter 4. Privacy and Security Nowadays, with the increased time spent online, through browsing the web, or using social media, we are exposing more and more of our data and online behavior to malicious actors on the internet. As more of our lives move in the digital sphere, the more vulnerable we are to a wide range of risk factors varying from phishing scams to malware, and even identity theft. Fortunately, there are ways to increase online privacy through using antivirus software, turning off tracking, reviewing site security, and choosing stronger passwords. Strong passwords. When talking about strong passwords, we have to mention that such passwords should be hard to guess, but easy for you to remember. When creating your password for an online site or social media, try to remember the following tips. Choose a password of at least 8 characters, the more characters, the better. But don't make it too long that it is easy to forget. Choose a mixture of both uppercase and lowercase letters. Choose a mixture of letters and numbers. Include at least one special character, for example, an exclamation mark, a hashtag, an asterisk, etc. Remember, you should not use the same password for more than one account, and you should try to change it regularly. Ideally, every six months. Antivirus and anti-spyware software. An antivirus program is a software that protects your device from viruses or other malicious programs that can infect your computer. Antivirus programs constantly scan your device and emails, looking for potentially harmful programs. In short, it works to effectively destroy potential dangers. Spyware protection is included in some antivirus software programs. This helps to protect you from spyware. Spyware is software installed without your knowledge or consent that can monitor your online activities and collect personal information while you're online. 
Anti-spyware software is used to prevent and remove spyware technology you may be subject to. Reviewing site security. Decoding site security policies can be a difficult task. Usually, they are lengthy documents with complicated language. Some positive signs while reading these privacy statements should include Description of the data they collect, such as payment methods and IP addresses, and outline how they are used. Statement of which third parties might use the data collected. A detailed description of security protocols. A detailed description of privacy choices and options on how to retrieve data collected. Contact information for further questions regarding security. Some tips regarding privacy statements can be to look for third-party keywords and see if the data is being shared or sold with other companies or if there is a legitimate reason for sharing the information for practical reasons. Cookies or the little bits of tracking information that websites use can be a potential privacy issue when surfing online. Cookies are a small chunk of information that almost all websites use to gather information from the website visitors. They can be useful as the system remembers the website, but the same cookies reveal information about your online history and online behavior. Some of the ways you can limit cookie behavior can include. You can clear browser history and delete cookies in your browser settings. You can enable the Do Not Track option in your browser settings. Be careful what you share on social media. As social media allows all kinds of private aspects of life to be shared online, the importance of having control over who can see the information shared is pretty significant. Information thieves can use social media postings to gather information and then use the information to hack into other accounts or for identity theft. Make sure you have checked the privacy options and make use of them to limit the sharing of your personal information. Make sure you check and approve what is visible to the general public from your online profiles. Once you have read and agreed to the amount you would consent to be shared with the online platform, the company retrieves your data and stores it in data servers. Where the data itself is stored is of utmost importance as data breaches can expose the data stored on those servers to unknown and malicious actors on the internet. This is why it is really important to research and check if the web services you use provide proper data storage. General Data Protection Regulation or more commonly known as GDPR, is a privacy and security EU law that imposes obligations onto organizations anywhere, so long as they target or collect data related to people in the EU. It's an extensive set of laws, which aim to impose strict laws regarding customers' data online, the collection of data, and the processing of data. GDPR laws work to protect personal data and prevent it from being used without the user's consent. What does it mean for you? In short terms, GDPR allows you to have control over your data and means that your personal information cannot be stored or used without your consent. The law also demands clear information regarding the data used and gives the right to withdraw previously given consent whenever the user wants. This way, web services have to honor the user's decision. Children under 13 can only give consent with permission from their parents. Chapter 5. Relationships and Communication Much like in real life, online communication is subject to certain rules and customs. In comparison to real-life communication, online communication has the ability to expose our data to a greater extent. The information and data we leave online can be visible to other people around the world and by this, the risk is greater. Everything we post or share online is permanent, so even commenting on specific posts can have consequences for yourself or somebody else. This is called digital footprint. The information you share online can be used to build up a picture of you as a person and your activities and interests. It is recommendable to think before you put any kind of information online. Once you post something online, anything can happen to it, it can be copied, shared and quickly attract unwelcome attention and it will stay there probably permanently. This is called your digital footprint and comprises the information about you that exists on the internet as a result of your online activity. It is important to remember to positively manage your digital footprint in order to be a good digital citizen. One of the most common ways of communicating online is through direct messages, video calls and status updates. This is the basis of social networking. 
Direct messaging is used mostly to communicate to one person or a small group, usually via messaging apps like Facebook Messenger, Viber, WhatsApp. It is a quick way to communicate short messages to other people and stay in contact. In comparison to direct messages, video calls involve video as well as audio of both of the participants of the conversation. Video calls give you the opportunity to chat to someone out loud on your device, while seeing their face on the screen too. This form of communication works great for friends and families who may be separated by distance. Gone are the days of writing letters and eagerly awaiting the postman to deliver a response. Status updates use the structure of the social network to show the desired message to a network group of people without directly messaging them. As technology changes, all of these types of communication can overlap, for example, the possibility of sending audio messages via a direct messaging app commenting on social network posts, blog posts or different websites can be another way of online communication. This way of communication is quick, instant and at the tips of your fingertips. It is important to remember that unlike real-life communication, online communication can remain permanently visible on the internet. This is why it's really important to maintain netiquette while communicating online. Good netiquette would include remembering that you're communicating with a real human being behind the name of the screen and be polite like you would be in real life. When communicating online, you should be mannerly, pleasant. Remember to make sure you check your grammar and state your expressions clearly so that online misunderstandings can be avoided. Writing all in caps locks can be another point of misunderstanding as it is generally perceived as yelling. It is also important to use respectful language towards others. Name-calling, swearing or other insults not only can hurt others but remain on the internet for a very long time for others to see. This goes for any social media site, blog, or comment even when it seems that is anonymous and cannot be tracked back to the original author. It can. Another general rule is to avoid sending large files via email that might overfill their email capacity or not arrive at all. In general, it is better to upload it to your own space or cloud and send the link to the person to view it. Make sure you respect other people's privacy when sending emails, as they might not want their email address or contact information forwarded to the third group of people. These are some general rules of netiquette that apply in most situations, however, there are many different online environments with slightly different rules applying to them. It's generally advised to be aware of the online community or environment in which you're taking part and follow the guidelines of the community. For example, an online work environment might require different behavior compared to an online community of activities you may interact with in your spare time. By spending an increased amount of time online, we begin to form relationships with the various people we interact with. More and more people nowadays are involved in romantic relationships via social media or through online dating apps. Online dating apps such as Tinder have transformed the online dating world. Online communication has influenced and changed relationships to a certain extent as they are generally conducted more via written text and images, compared to traditional face to face communication and relationships. More and more people are searching for their life partner through services like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tinder, and the communication of the partners is conducted in the manner of the environment of those services. For example, Tinder and similar dating apps provide opportunities to view pictures of potential partners and by swiping left or right, you either give positive or negative feedback about connecting with that person. After the positive approval of both sides, communication via chat can begin, this is a drastically different communication method compared to meeting face-to-face -face and has a direct influence over how relationships are formed. As these relationships can be healthy and long-lasting, one has to be wary of the dangers involved in this kind of behavior. As the communication is conducted online, some of the partners listed in this kind of app might not provide proper or true information about themselves. This might cause a misleading situation further down the road. In some cases, the profiles listed in the apps or on any site might not show someone's real age, status, or they might not even be a real person. Fake profiles are created often in the hope that they will emotionally trick someone's information. This is called catfishing and there are few ways to check the validity of a profile. If a profile seems a bit strange, it's a good idea to Google the name and check what information is available. The same goes for the photos. By searching the photo on Google, you can check if the photo belongs to another persona. 
In general, a good sign is if you are able to speak with the person via video call and assure yourself that the person exists in reality and it's not a fake profile. Online deceit such as catfishing can cause serious emotional and financial stress to its victims, so being aware of these online frauds is key to navigating online dating. One of the ways to protect yourself is by being aware of the information you send through online communication. Millions of people worldwide use online dating services or dating apps. Please bear in mind that these services do not conduct criminal background checks on users, so it is up to you to determine if you are comfortable meeting up with someone. You can still increase your safety when interacting with others through online dating apps and services by avoiding connecting with suspicious profiles, checking out your potential date on social media and waiting to share personal information. You should never respond to a request to send money, especially overseas or via wire transfer. The list below offers a few examples of some common stories or suspicious behavior scammers may use to build trust and sympathy so they can manipulate another user in an unhealthy way. Be extra careful if the person you are communicating asks for financial assistance in any way, often because of a sudden personal crisis, claims to be recently widowed with children, disappears suddenly from the site then reappears under a different name, gives vague answers to specific questions, is overly complimentary and romantic too early in your communication, pressures you to provide your phone number or talk outside the dating app or site, requests your home or work address under the Guise of sending flowers or gifts, tells inconsistent or grandiose stories. If the person you matched with has no bio, no linked social media accounts, or has only posted one picture, it may be a fake account. Online dating can be exciting, but it is also particularly important to be careful. Part of relationships is the physical intimacy between the partners and as online relationships lack that part, many times intimacy can be expressed through sending explicit messages, photos, or videos or in short, sexting. This might be especially risky behavior if the partner who receives the data is not trusted, which may result in the data being shared with the general public at the expense of enormous emotional pain on the person who sent the data in the first place. In general, it's recommended not to send explicit material to strangers over the internet, be wary of deceptive personas online and practice safe and respectful communication via the social services on the internet. Chapter 6. The Dangers of Oversharing Online Social media can be an extremely useful tool for certain groups like seniors with limited social interactions. The ability to stay in touch with friends and family, entertainment, and even finding new friends can be the difference between loneliness and leading a more fulfilled life. However, social media comes with a lot of risks involved if not used carefully. Sharing posts, videos or images on social media can be effective communication towards a larger group of friends but also, can be a potential vulnerability in certain cases when scammers and stalkers are involved. The structure of most social media is set so, to increase the amount of data you put into it. Most social media platforms require you to add your date of birth, telephone number, location, and if you are paying for a premium service, even your financial details. They do so by offering advantages and reminders to increase the possibility of the user adding their personal data to the platform. You might think, why is it so bad to have this personal data on a social media platform? Remember, not everybody on the internet is who they seem. It could be the lovely new friend that you're chatting with recently, turns out to be an undercover scammer. By establishing the appearance of friendship, the scammer will be able to gather enough personal data to be able to efficiently guess the security question of your profile and gain access to your password or your banking account. Even the birth date can be used by a scammer. It's never a good idea to share financial details with someone online, even if it's a potential date. Usually, it's pretty suspicious if somebody starts asking about specific financial details. Checking in or posting the location you're currently in can be a problem also. For example, posting your vacation photos while you're on vacation will allow the stalker to know that you're not at home and your house is currently empty. A better idea is to post the photos after you've returned from vacation. This is why it is really important to be selective when accepting new friend requests. If the person doesn't sound familiar to you or you don't know the person, it might be a better idea not to accept the friend request. Oversharing personal data on the internet is a serious risk to your privacy. 
It might be tempting in time or passion or anger to vent on your social media account and share intimate details about your relationship, personal matters, or family drama but the information posted in such a manner can be good material for cyberstalkers or scammers. This information gives them a useful source of your private life and could potentially be misused. Maybe a funny and embarrassing photo posted on your online profile can be a good laugh but in the hands of the wrong people can cause serious real-life problems on the reputation and image of the user. The same applies to posting embarrassing or intimate photos of someone else that may endanger their well-being in real life. This is especially important regarding photos and videos of children. While they are young, they might not think much of the photos of them on social media, but later in life they might feel embarrassed of the photos as they grow older. Their privacy becomes more of a concern. It might make them feel they don't have ownership over their own values or bodies. The same photos, videos or anecdotes might be a source of bullying later on in their life by their peers in school or could impact the child's future in some unexpected way. The images will remain on the internet for years to come, and we don't know what their goals will be when they grow up. Sharing intimate photographs or videos of your children in certain cases can attract pretty dangerous people. There are cases of children's photos posted on social media sites later on found on children's pornography sites. Besides the photos or videos, the posts often include geolocation, landmarks, or schools the children visit, all potential data for real-world misuse by a cyber stalker. Having all of this in mind, it is important to be mindful and careful of the personal data shared online. Oversharing personal information can put you at risk of financial loss, reputation loss, or even affect your job. A careful and mindful use of social media can provide us with helpful tools that connect us with others in the digital world, minimizing the risks you or your loved ones could face. So, how can you protect yourself? First, you can start by checking the privacy settings on the social media platforms you use. In the settings, browse your privacy options. Here, you can adjust who sees your posts and how much information you share with others. If you have added too much personal information, you can remove it. Just remember, profile and cover photos are always publicly available. Make sure you think carefully before accepting friend requests and make sure you know and trust the new friend requests that you receive. If you're unsure, do not accept the request. Evaluate the audience of your social network posts and carefully select who would like to have access to which information. Be careful of quizzes, games, and other apps that ask you to give away your personal data to be able to give you some result or access to the game. Do not trust any app or quiz before checking the developer and assuring yourself of the security of the app. As in everything in life, sharing online can bring connectivity and closeness, but oversharing can bring real-life risks. Mindful social media use is the key to successful and enjoyable online engagement. Chapter 7. Which social media is best for me? Not all social media platforms are created for the same purpose. Different social media platforms have varying goals, audiences, and methods of functioning. One thing that all of them have in common is the social part. They are created to give a communication platform to the user in order to connect with people you know, or other like-minded users. Some social media platforms achieve this by offering communication methods for sending text messages, some through images or videos, and many, very often combine all those methods and constantly add additional methods and ideas. Some social media platforms focus on friends and family, while others on work and work-related topics. There are social media platforms that serve mostly for art or hobby-related topics or simply watching user-created videos. Social media platforms are constantly evolving and changing, so keeping in track with them can be a bit difficult. Let's explore the most popular social media platforms that exist nowadays. Facebook. Facebook, one of the most used social media networks, Facebook has over 2.89 billion users across the world. Even though it was primarily created to connect university students, nowadays it is mostly referred to as a family platform where you can connect with most of your family or long-lost friends. Twitter. Twitter is primarily a textual service and is often referred to as microblogging. It allows you to share small text messages of up to 280 characters to a large audience of people. 
It is used mostly for comments, criticism, sharing ideas, news, or other diverse topics. The audience of this social media platform is mostly young people, from 18 to 29 years old. Pinterest. Pinterest is a visual pinboard style platform that collects and categorizes different images based on your interests and aesthetics. It connects people through shared interests with other users. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a social network for professionals. The goal of this network is to connect different professionals of certain fields in order to provide better business opportunities and networking. The profile can be built like a CV and there is the possibility to search for jobs. YouTube. YouTube is a social network of video producers and also users who enjoy watching videos. Interacting on this page is either by posting videos or watching, liking, and commenting on videos. Most of the users on the platform are 18 to 34 years old. Instagram. Instagram was originally created for vintage photography and photography in general, but the popularity grew in 2012. It is now used primarily as a photo platform where the main way of communicating is through posted images or videos. The majority of Instagram users are 18 to 29 years youngsters. TikTok. TikTok is a social networking service based on sharing short, mostly funny video clips. It gained popularity in 2020 and is mostly used by young people. How would I know which social media platform is best for me? We can start by evaluating the desire to be on a social network platform. Do you want to share your videos with the others, post opinions on certain topics, or simply connect with friends or family? All social media platforms cater to the preferences of the individual user, regardless of the topic and method. Messaging services and connections with friends are offered by Facebook, while Twitter provides a platform for short snippets of information. LinkedIn is concentrated on making professional and job-related connections while YouTube is solely concentrated on video content. Whatever social network you use, you should make sure it is used in a safe and healthy way. There are two ways of using these networks. Active use is online behavior that facilitates direct exchanges, such as commenting, liking, sending messages, and engaging with the content and the users on the platform. In contrast to that, passive use is monitoring without direct interaction with the other users. Regardless of how we use those platforms, there is no question of the ever-increasing presence of social media in our daily lives. As almost everybody is using some kind of social media and more and more, we conduct our daily tasks online. In today's world it is not unusual to use online sites for shopping, chatting with friends or looking for entertainment, as constantly indulge in the world of social media. All of these platforms are useful tools in staying connected with people of the world, exploring your interests, or sharing parts of your life with others. With a careful use of social media, these platforms can be beneficial and add value to your life. Some of that value is building or keeping relationships that may have fizzled out because of distance or time. Besides all the misinformation, social media can also be educational and provide a lot of useful information or even inspire civic engagement. When used in a proper, safe, and healthy way, social media can be engaging and informative, rather than intimidating. Chapter 8. Credit and Copyright When using the internet, we encounter countless images, videos, and a variety of texts. In broad terms, this is regarded as content. We interact with online content, by reading, viewing, posting, reposting, and creating our own content. Essentially, this process is making us consumers as well as creators and content distributors. In simpler terms, every time you open an image on social media, watch a video, listen to a song or a podcast or play a game, you are consuming creative content. If you publish a picture, or a written text, or a song, we are becoming creators of content in the online world. Often, you might find that you really like specific content you may find online, and you would like to share it or include it in your own content for others to see. The content that you are resharing usually has a specific author and this is protected by copyright law. This means that the content that you found was created by somebody who put their time, work, and creativity into the content you find available on your screen. Naturally, it deserves protection by copyright law and given credit. What is copyright? 
Copyright is the law that allows the creators of any kind of content to control the use of their work by others. This means copyrighted work cannot be duplicated, disseminated, or appropriated by others without the creator's permission. The protected content of the creator is regarded as intellectual property. You can easily recognize copyrighted material with the C logo and circle around it. Intellectual property or the content itself can be purchased directly from the author or through a design store and used regarding the rule set. If you're unable to buy the content or your plan may be to use it for a non-profit cause, you can simply obtain permission from the author. Permission can be obtained by asking the creator of the work if part or the whole content of the work can be used in a specific manner. Usually, this is done by contacting the creator of the work directly and asking for permission. In certain cases, it's permitted to use parts of the work under the conditions of fair use. For the purpose of commentary, news reporting, educational use, criticism, or scholarly reports limited portions of the work can be used. If it's not possible to ask for permission or use protected content, an alternative solution is to use content assigned as Creative Commons. This content won't cost money, but there are some rules applying to its use. Creative Commons content in most cases requires certain attribution or giving credit to the author. This content is restricted to non-profit use, and you're not allowed to change the content. To recognize this content, you can search for logo CC with a circle around it. For example, if you need a free image to use for your cooking blog and you would like to use Google Search for this, then you can choose the option of image search in the Google Search engine. Another option is to use one of the many websites that are dedicated to creative common content like archive.org or publicphoto.org and find the right content for your blog. When using copyrighted content under the Fair Use License or content with Creative Commons licenses, it's morally fair and legally required to give credit to the original author of the creative work. This is usually done by explaining who the original author of the work is and making it available for others to find the original work and author. For example, if you used an image or text on your website, you should give the full name of the author and the link to the author's website. Failing to respect and follow the copyright rules of the digital world may lead to copyright infringement and legal action. This means that the author may request the content to be taken down from the website or the websites automatically recognize the copyrighted content and remove it from view. In worse cases, copyright infringement cases may end up in legal court. Plagiarism is a little bit of a different concept compared to copyright infringement. It refers mostly to the appropriation of someone else's words and crediting them as your own. This malpractice is quite common in the online world, and it devalues the work and effort of the authors who invested their time and knowledge to create original content. This is why it is ethically and morally important to respect each other's ideas, opinions, and creations. To summarize, responsible and respectful use of online content requires first checking who is the author of the content before using it. After the author is identified, ask for permission to use it, and give credit to the author. If necessary, buy it and use it responsibly. Chapter 9. Sock Puppet Social Networking. An Introduction to Online Fraud and Deception. Each year, millions of older adults are the target of online scams and frauds. Older adults are considered to hold more wealth than younger people. With a combination of their vulnerability to new sophisticated digital frauds, makes adults especially attractive to online scammers. It's reported that older adults are less likely to report when they have fallen for online scams. Decreased cognitive ability, social isolation, and low levels of digital and financial literacy all contribute to making age group vulnerable to scams and fraud. Protection from these malpractices first starts with understanding and being aware of these dangers. Online fraud represents the deception by providing untrue information or hiding information with the goal of obtaining financial or other kinds of gains. Scams are different methods of fraud designed for the same purpose and facilitated by cybercriminals. Some of the most popular scams on the internet come in the form of emails or messages on social media as legitimate messages from your bank asking you for your bank card details or emails containing a special offer from a foreign prince offering his inheritance for a small investment sum. To recognize a scam message, it is wise to pay attention to the email address. 
For example, a scam email address might contain the name of your bank but also random numbers or letters and will not look the same as the official bank email. Unexpected contact where you have not asked to be contacted should be avoided as well as messages that require you to make quick and rush decisions. If the message sounds too good to be true, then probably it is. Scam messages can contain misspelled company names or other mistakes that the actual company would not do. Another indicator of scams is the request to send your password or bank card PIN number. Companies will never ask such personal information via email or social media message. Competitions and awards offered through emails that you have no knowledge of participating in are usually a good indicator of a scam. Paying attention to the messages you open can be crucial to avoid falling victim to online scams. Protecting yourself from scammers includes avoiding unexpected and unknown contacts and making sure you avoid giving away personal information of any kind that might be misused later. Keeping your passwords secure and changing them regularly can help to prevent identity theft. If in case you decide to make advance payment to a company, make sure that the company is legitimate and check the validity of the website you're using. A good indicator of using a secure website is to check the website address starts with HTTPS, not just HTTP. When talking about online deception and fraud, it's important to mention sock puppet online deception. These are fake online identities that are created for deception. They may appear as profiles on social media or profiles on other websites and they try to mimic real personalities. As the name explains, there are no real personalities behind these sock puppet accounts. They are usually created in bulk and for a specific reason. Sock puppet accounts are created to act in the interests of the scammer. For example, some sock puppet accounts are used to write reviews for a specific product and create an artificial positive bias towards the product in hope that the real customer will see the review and buy the product. Some of them serve the function to vote on online polls and create artificial opinion polls in favor of the person who ordered the creation of the sock puppets. Similarly, this applies to sock puppet accounts that are created on social media and serve the purpose to show artificial increased support and visibility of specific political opinions or views. Sometimes, sock puppet accounts are created to evade a block by a website. When the original user is banned from the website for not following the rules, the user may create a sock puppet account to evade the ban and still use the website. As sock puppet deception has the power to look natural and convincing, while having a large number of fake accounts to attribute numbers, this can mislead and deceive people into believing an already formed opinion or view towards a particular topic. Therefore, it is important to know to recognize such accounts and avoid being misled by them. Some of the early signs would be fake avatars or fake names. Many of these accounts might be created quickly or in bulk, so not enough time and effort is put in to make them like genuine personal accounts. They might also post a lot, usually connected to a specific topic of promotion. It's advisable to check the friends of the account. Sock puppet accounts usually are connected to each other through a network of friends connections. If the friends of that account post about exactly the same thing, they might be sock puppets of the same creator. As they are controlled from the same source, they might have synchronized content with the same information posted. As soon as you identify deceitful and harmful accounts, it's advisable to report them to the administrators of the website or social media platform. This can be done by choosing the report option on their profile and stating the reason for reporting. By reporting such accounts, the administrators of the website can ban and remove these accounts and minimize the damage done to other users of the network. Thank you for listening to the Wowzer S Project audio book for adult learners. This was a summary of the most important topics, which will help you understand the virtual world better. We hope you found the information useful. Please check our website www.wowza.eu for further information and useful content about the digital world. The Wowza project is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. The European Commission's support for the production of this publication does not constitute an endorsement of the contents, which reflect the views only of the authors, and the Commission cannot be held responsible for any use which may be made of the information contained therein.